Welcome to another session of Philosophy Workout. Today, the topic is what Germans think about Trump, what the I German know. media and how the German media is talking about Trump and how does it feel if you sympathize with Trump as a German and you live in Germany. I have with me today uh, American and German, German-American YouTuber. His name is Bernard Everett. Hello, Bernard. Hello, and thank you for having me. You're a German. Uh, you, you speak very well German, perfect German, and you produce mostly content where you explain what happens in American politics, which I, you find very interesting. I find very interesting. I follow this politics in America since 2009, I think. And you try to explain it to Germans, um, but Germans don't seem to grasp it and they just uh, revert back to Hillary. Is it, is well, it your, your impression as well? Well, there, of course, there's two avenues of explaining. One is the uh, YouTube channel in which there's many people who are kind of like-minded uh, from uh, at this point. So most of them, them would probably agree with my explanations. Uh, however, the other avenue being the personal interactions I have at the university and with people I meet here. And they tend to go with a non-Trump perspective. Although there are quite a few people who actually do, let's say, listen to, uh, to what I have to say, even though I don't necessarily change their mind. But uh, that, of course, is a pretty hard thing to do anyway. I mean, trying to persuade someone is often hard enough as it is. And the method you have to use is a phrase I've used in the pre-conversation, uh, water wears away the stone. Basically, you have to go again and again and say the things and basically try to give them a scale or a perspective on the thing um, that they will understand so that they're basically at the end, they just kind of cave in because the, the weight of all the arguments against their position is too much. Uh, and you talked about yeah. moral relativism in one of your videos. So that, and you suspect that Germans are even more moral relativists than Americans. Did I get that right? Uh, yes, although now that I just just now that I think about it, there's actually something else. What I did is in the pre-conversation, I um, I was you asked me if I was more German or more American. I said I was more American um, because I identify with the individual liberty, with the free market uh, stuff, with the you know pursuit of happiness, all the good stuff in the Constitution, basically. And basically, the limited republic that our founding fathers tried to give us, I'm an American citizen, actually, so um, just to put that, even though I was born and raised in Germany and I've lived here pretty much all my life, I'm still an American citizen. But um, I still love the, 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 the country in that I love the people of the country and I love the look of the country. Like, I've, I've been almost every state east of the Mississippi. I love basically the whole landscape. I just don't like Washington very much. I, I'm very much in the camp that if there's one city we can do without, it's probably Washington. <laughs> um, now I actually forgot, no, the moral relativism, exactly. So the reason I, I identify also identify more as American than as German is because Germany actually feels kind of like a swamp when it comes to morals. A lot of arguments here are arguments from authority. People basically follow a standpoint or a viewpoint because people in power follow it and they don't tend to think as much as was the feeling. Now, it may, may have different explanations, which is something I'm going to get into sometime in the future, because I, I think what it mostly is... Uh, anyway, that, that's for later. It's, it's a, they still distrust the government, but they also distrust the alternatives to government even more, is, I think, the thing. And then the moral relativism is that, exactly as in the US, you've been told there's no absolute truth, and since there's no absolute truth, no one has any valid thing to measure anything by and just goes of what the feeling in the moment is just goes off their their feely emotionally kind of things i think also <laughs> one thing for moral relativism is that some americans if they if you ask them this week if it's more worse what trump said or what bill clinton did they will say, tell you i think what trump did uh, trump just said the rhetoric rhetorics of trump are worse than what Bill Clinton did in the 90s or what else he did and there's, let's yes there's quite a few actually I think there was a poll out um, which I only heard on an interview so again this is like third hand material but if if the interviewees are to believe uh, are to be believed then there was a poll that basically said that 21% of Americans think that what 
Bill Clinton did was better than what Trump said, or so what Trump said was worse than what Bill Clinton did. On the other hand, there was about 40% of people who said that what Bill Clinton did was worse or just as bad as what Donald Trump said. So I don't quite know if actually most people believe that, but there's quite a few people who do believe it. And I think especially in the younger generations, as we saw with Casey Neistat recently um, saying that he votes for Hillary because Trump is just so incredibly terrible. If you actually looked at any Which is not an argument, of course. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you look at any objective measure, by objective, I just mean, okay, you put a scale in it and then you try to figure out, okay, what is bad? And you say, okay, racism is bad. And then how do you define racism? Well, it's the, uh, what's it called? The discrimination of a group based on their skin color. Now, most people will try, if they're sociologists, I mean, I'm in sociology, but I'm not in American universities, so I'm not full shit yet. Um, if you go to the American university, they will tell you, no, 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 but it's plus power or something. It doesn't matter in the end because you got a black president and you got a lot of black people in power. You got, what was it, Baltimore, I think, where the, the last uh, shooting was, where there was a black mayor, a black police chief, and a black police officer who shot a black guy. So you can't tell me it's, you know, white nationalist power that basically did this. Um, but, okay, I lost my train of thought for a second. Jesus, let's, that's pretty let's terrible. think about our American or British viewers. They probably th um, like to know what the media landscape is like in Germany and how they, on which side they report. And I would like to start with state media, which I think has like 50% of market share. In radio, they have probably 90% of talk radio market share. Yeah. And it's if I listen to them because I want to know what the uh, Germans think, because pr most Germans just take what they get from media, from the mainstream old time media and take it for their own opinion. And uh, in this kind of media, you have like maybe once a month, it's like a miracle occurs. They talk about like positively about Trump or neut a neutral position on Trump. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have to tell this to Bernard. He will be so impressed that I found one one voice, like 10 minutes of reporting on Trump that is not completely biased. Just, <laughs> oh, yeah, I actually just I remember my train of thought. I want to finish it really quick, if that's OK. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, what I said was basically the objective measure. So like, okay, you got racism, that's bad. Okay, so you got what Donald Trump says on the one hand, then you got action on the other hand. Then action should weigh more than words. And you say, okay, there's a chance that Donald Trump will act on his words and they're racist, whatever. You know, that's a different discussion. But then you already have Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton who sponsored the crime bill that was really harmful to the black community. And then you got, you know, actual action that was already very harmful to from powerful people towards a minority based on their skin color, basically, um, because it targeted black neighborhoods, especially. And then so you got the racist, quote unquote, action on the one hand, and you got racist words on the other hand. And by any objective measure, which is worse, you know, Hillary Clinton saying they're super predators and Donald Trump saying that among illegal immigrants, there's rapists which then got misconstrued, even in the German media, to tie it back to that point, to, oh, he said all Mexicans are rapists. And the reason yeah, and it why worries me so much because most Germans are not willing or they trust the old media so much that they don't fact check their media. So most of them never start to doubt the translations that they get from Trump. They usually don't listen to the original Trump or they just get a cut up version from Trump. Americans at least have like, I, I guess that the normal American at least saw like 10 minutes of not uh, censored Trump. Talk, he, he, Trump talking 10 minutes on his own, but Germans never see that. They always have cut, cut up versions and then they are translated in a way that makes him look extra bad. So when he says something like, Let's throw out those um, protesters that are trying to stop my um, discussion here. In German translation, it will sound like, let's fuck all them up and throw them out in a huge uh, brawl. And, beat and, them to shit, you know, beat the crap out yeah. of them. Something like that. Yeah, Sorry so, for the cursing, so, by the way. They, um, they do the translation in an extra bad way, which makes them look like a lunatic that just wants to punch people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manhandle them when you take them out, stuff like that. No, but the thing is that the German media is actually worse than a carbon copy of the American media when it comes to this. Now, in America, as most Americans would be aware of, the media has very low trust ratings, uh, what, what you just said.
basically you have like six to eleven percent trust in media, and you have a large alternative media scene. In Germany, there is still more trust. I've actually read a study for 2016 when it comes to media and trust in media and political news, um, which said that trust is going down and actually views on the TV and radio and everything is also going down. Uh, people are listening less to old media, but it is still, I think, like five or 10 years away from where America is at the moment with alternative media actually being strong. Uh, which is also a reason for my and your YouTube channels uh, in our German language that we're basically trying to show people that trusting in the media is basically misplaced trust. It's it's not very, very good. Because what you get, and I'll try to make this quick because I seem to tend to ramble, um, is that you have German journalists, political journalists, who go to the US and their correspondents for Washington, whatever. And what they do there is they only listen to official or or you know, the, the, the CNN, MSNBC, they listen to the official media, they don't even listen to Fox News at all. That, that's one feeling or one, not, not even a feeling, it's something they actually write in their articles, oh, we don't listen to Fox News because they're crazy anyway. Um, and they listen to what the American media says and take that for truth and then put a spin on it because they think that the American media is neutral. They think, okay, well, if they're neutral, then we're gonna portray it slightly worse for our audience, or maybe they just do it without thinking it, um, so that our audience will just you know, get the important part, or whatever is important to them. And the reason they think that American media is neutral because they have that opinion of their own media in Germany, because most Germans have this opinion of German media, it's, it's kind of neutral, you know? They actually think that American media must be neutral also, and then take what they say for truth, don't listen to the rest. Yeah, so that, that pretty accurately describes my impression of German media. It seems like they have like a f Facebook ghetto where they all push each other's opinions and they all were in the start, like two years ago, they all agreed on that Trump is absolutely crazy and that you cannot um, trust him at all. And now they're all going by what Hillary says. They are like directly reporting from Hillary's mind if you listen to German uh, German translations, at oh, least, yeah, that they, you will never hear like uh, that, that Trump might have won a campaign or something or, or might have won um, a, a discussion or a debate that it wouldn't, they would never report that. They would maybe sometimes report that Hillary was just uh, side to side with Trump, but usually it's Hillary won and they always take the, they, they just take the NBC headline, put them into the Google translator and put it on a German television. That's sometimes the uh, um, impression I get. Yeah, it, it pretty much is that. But the other thing is that um, I, they sound like they're on Hillary Clinton's uh, um, election team or whatever, their election helpers or something. They, they, they sound like they're trying to get her elected, which is kind of crazy if you think about it because who in Germany can vote in the US election? So, I mean, seriously, there's literally almost no one they can reach that isn't going to vote Hillary anyway um, that would they would they um, that they would uh, convince with this. I and think they just want to get the invitations when Hillary is president and she comes to Germany and gives some interviews. I, I don't know. I don't actually think that it's necessarily that. I think that for them it is actually a battle that's closer to home than you would think on first sight. Because on first sight it seems contradictory that why would you make so much fuss about something that you have almost no control over? However, recently I read an editorial by Sascha Lobo, or I haven't read it yet. Um, I, I'm going to do a video on that for the German audience again. Um, which In which he's a columnist for uh, one of our largest uh, newspapers and online uh, um, newspapers and he basically wrote that people who support Trump, Germans who support Trump haven't understood democracy. That was the title of the entire article. And um, you're, you're kind of like, why would you write that? I mean, basically you're just insulting a bunch of people for no good reason. But then you read further and then he says stuff like there's parallels to movements at home and what he means by that is the AFD, the alternative uh, for Germany, uh, the new party that basically is around the block now. And what, what you get the feeling is that basically by battling Trump they think they're also battling the AFD. They're basically pushing against Trump because they actually think that Trump, as Hillary said in her all right speech, is you know part of this giant uh, 
alt-right um, movement, nationalist, supranationalist movement, which was instigated by Vladimir Putin, um, and that the AfD is and part they, of that. Think, yes, yes, and they think also that the AfD and other right-wing parties like Le Pen in France is paid for by Putin sources. <laughs> well, 